Welcome to the 21 Convention Podcast. I'm Steve Maeda, and today we have two of our most requested podcast interviewees. That is Sasha Daygame and James Marshall. It gets fun, it gets exciting, it goes all over the place, and of course, it gets very, very real. You're gonna have to definitely take notes, listen to this one. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Leave a comment down below, and we'll get back to you. Let's get into this interview, and man, some awesome stuff on the way. What is happening? I am here with Sasha Daygame, James Marshall, the 21 Convention Podcast. What's happening, gents? Well, <laughs> this is going to be the most quiet it's going to be for the next hour. We just... I just want to say that... Well, I mean, we should really just... For the first time ever, lost for words. Here's so I'll just thing. start talking then. You know, let James, me tell you about my life. <laughs> James over here, he's feeling a little bit intimidated because, as usual, I'm dressed up all fancy, and he just likes to take it easy, and he doesn't really, he doesn't really think it matters what you wear as long as you've got a really ugly. Well, I think it matters. I just haven't figured it out yet. I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm working. I'm keep working, working on, on it. it. I've been modeling you for quite a while, mm -hmm. and then incrementally. I think you've slowly been here and there putting on the fashion and getting better. So. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Working cool. on it. Mm. Mm -hmm. What stimulated this change in you, James? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think we've stimulated quite a lot of changes in each other over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, Sexually, emotionally, or? Uh, oh, fuck, on all levels. Yeah, I mean, we've, we're more or less the same brain in two slightly different bodies now. So, yeah, you know, we've been talking about this a lot with the different podcasts, but how does that happen? I mean, there's a certain level of influence and connection. I mean, we're all working in the seduction, dating realm, and so there's this hyper level of empathy, hyper level of connection, hyper level of sexual exchange, but... And competition and gossip as well. So. That, well, yeah, 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 totally. That's yeah. like the anti, that's the disconnect. Right? Yeah. But in all of that, like, how has your process happened? Because both of you guys have been in sync on many different levels, and then maybe disappear for a few months and come back together. Like, how has that kind of ebb and flow, you know, uh, worked for you guys? Right here, Sasha, you, you first. About? Well, but first, let me just say we were joking about the fact. Obviously, if anyone there's like, this doesn't make any sense. James dresses better than Sasha. <laughs> then you're stupid, and you should have realized we were Irony. sarcastic. Irony. Was maybe the, you need some social dynamics training to get yeah. the joke. If you didn't get that joke, you need joke that. training. Joke training. Getting jokes. Next workshop. year, 2016, the year after next, that'll be there. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we just, uh, you know, we're just sort of, we started out as polar kind of opposites of me being like super crazy, fucking running around going, bah! and James. And that's just, changed. Somewhat, yeah, definitely. And then and then James was just like really fucking quiet. I'll show him what I use. I'll yeah, do. you go ahead, you do your move. There you go. There it was. And I'll do, I'll do it with James' impression of me. <laughs> No, right, my impression so of you is like, what's up? I think you're fucking hot. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> See, three years ago, James wouldn't have been that animated. No, there's no, he wouldn't have done any of that. He just would have been like, yeah, Sasha's funny. That would have been it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just started off that way, and uh, ever since we uh, met for the first time at actually, the we all met together, 2011, 21 That's right. convention, London, That's right. London in the bathroom. England. And the yeah. catacombs of that. Uh, it wasn't bathroom, the, wasn't it? Well, you know, there was that that underground hallway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was yeah. bumped, and then we were like, Neh. and I was like, dudes, I'm really depressed, and my business is going down the drain. Sasha's like, I want to get out of London. Well, no, but th this is something which is is crazy because a turning point for everybody. You know, what you wanted at that moment, what you wanted at that moment, turned into different things, and there was like, man, what am I going to take a chance on? You know, what am I going to do? And that is so important for the roles of, you know, what you teach and coach. And what you teach and coach could only come from that root of, like, you know, doubt and question within yourself in taking the chance, the, the you know, the path that didn't always look great, you know, yeah. and, and having faith in it. And, yeah. and I've, I've even seen you guys process through that. But, like, what, what happened 2011 to 2014, you know, where'd the adventure take you? Well, shitloads happened. Um, we've... we've circled the world um, multiple times together and, and separately since then. But yeah, that really was a turning point because although probably to the outside world when they're looking at our YouTube videos and stuff, they're like, those guys have got it sorted, they figured it out, they got chicks and... Fun, fun, fun awesome, and yeah. Maybe, maybe the money. ideal, I mean, shit. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, which was too, true partially, but it was also true that we were, you know, struggling and trying to make a living and having our own personal stuff. And for me at that time, that was, that was the darkest time of my, of my adult life, really. 
um, you know, I was bro broken up with the love of my life and business wasn't great and I had, took a really big gamble going over to that convention when I was living in Australia at the time. Um, and it was one of those things where you just yeah. had to step into the abyss knowing that it might not pay off and yeah. then it definitely did. Same exact thing for me, uh, but just different scenario. I was in London and uh, was madly in love with this girl, like just completely head over heels and like, like right. this is the girl for me, it was, it was crazy. And then I meet this guy and we have this great thing and we're just like, wow, this could be so much fun, what we're gonna do and whatever. And he's like, yeah, you gotta come do this. You know, he's got this Euro tour program where he just goes around Europe teaching these courses. He's like, yeah, you're gonna come with me. It's gonna be awesome and I'm gonna hustle and I'll bring some clients and we'll do this thing and make money and have a great time and whatever. And uh, it came to this ultimate choice because what people don't realize is I was actually living uh, completely illegally <laughs> in, in England at the time. I didn't have a visa, nothing. Right. I was just there. So my choice was do so I leave in this? in Scotland Yard right now. Like, yeah, I knew it. Oh, bloody hell, it's too late. Next door, going, uh, get you. But anyway, so the choice was do I stay with this girl uh, illegally and try and make it work with her or do I pursue my fucking dream of just like traveling the world and, and yeah. you know, take it to the next level in seduction and basically follow my life kind yeah. of where, where it was taking me or just do the thing with a girl and it was fucking brutal. And of course I chose walking the path that I had to and it was fucking excruciating. You know, it's, it's funny because yeah. I remember you saying at that 21 convention, you had said, uh, you, you had said like, man, I don't know if this was worth it for me. You know, because in the, the immediate results, it was, it was a big investment. I mean, if you look on a map, it's the opposite side of the world, yep. you know. Uh, it's the opposite hemisphere, you know, so. And it's the wrong way for an Australian. We're supposed to go from merry old England to Australia and stay there because we'd be naughty boys. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it was. We, we've got like some microphones. Mic yeah, I know, they're yeah. exploding My mic committed out. suicide about two minutes Both ago. It just went, fuck yours, it, and jumped. And I'm like, is this going that badly? I can't believe this. Then his jump, <laughs> yeah, and now you're like falling. Now they're trying to have sex on the floor with each other. <laughs> well, well we didn't die, what, let's fuck. That's what they're doing. That's usually what attempted suicide patients do, you know. But No, but yeah, you know, it's interesting because it did work out. That was a crazy, like if you just looked at the points on the map of 21 convention speeches, it would be like 2011, then 2012 London, and then 2012 Melbourne. There's like a huge progression, man. Mm -hmm. and, and even for yourself too. You know, it's like 2011 London, 2011 or 12 London, very, very big difference. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. crazy transition. And think about the time that transpired in between there of you know, you talk about the hero's journey. Or I, I, I hear you guys mention it. It was a lot of pumping. Yeah, it was much. quite a lot of pumping. Yeah, people were busy doing things. We were all there in the same apartment. Sometimes listening to sounds. Of, anyway. Yep. Yeah. Beating off in the corner, or <laughs> I remember you guys like giving me a round of applause one one evening. Oh you know, yeah, that? I remember that. There was, James had a particularly good performance. We won't name the country, and we won't name. Details. But uh, but yeah, it was just an excellent show, and there was screaming, and there, it, it's some kind of sound of just something hitting the wall, and it was so good. So I just decided let's make this funny and awkward for James because that's what I do. It's kind of my thing, awkward. Well, and I just started fucking <laughs> clapping very loudly, and I think so, you joined here's in. Here's the here's the thing, yeah, okay, fun. is what you guys may not understand is the girl appreciated you are, apparently. She, are she you ever involved in the seduction scene, and you are a coach, okay? and you room with someone else, which is inevitable because you're, you're always room with people, you're going to hear your buddy boning another chick, right? Mm -hmm. And it, you, you want to talk about awkward. When you're the guy sitting outside of the room, that's the awkward moment. Masturbating. Yeah, as, yeah, well, we because then you have nothing you. to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you're like, Remember well, that fuck. you ended up wiping Jeez. your hand on your shirt and then you just you tried to use I that used little bar of soap but, we had yeah. to. Anyway, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. But uh, my favorite thing is actually to take my condoms and then leave them in pockets of guys. I did that. I did that to you. Remember when you brought that Russian girl home, and then we put the banana under your pillow with the, <laughs> with the, with the, with the condom rolled onto it. Yeah, that just, was just, just that was just it. silly. No, that wasn't it. I, I I went out and I, I had this. Basically, I went. To, I'm not like I'm an expert with strippers, but I happened to pick up a stripper one time, and she was coming over with me, and they all knew she was coming over with me, and then I and uh, I come upstairs. And everyone's sitting around in their underwear around the table, mm -hmm. and they all just look over with a couple of I had my shirt, going, like, my shirt tied up like this, and, we, and Gareth Jones was in his leopard print underwear. And, and <laughs> of we're, course we're, he would have leopard print <laughs> underwear, yeah, yeah. And we were just sitting there <laughs> drinking tea, and we're like, oh, I didn't realize we had company. Yeah, it was all posh. <laughs> And then, and then at some point there was a banana with a condom on it as well. Yeah. And then we went and we did our thing. Well, I did that because that was the sort of thing that you, you would That's do. That's exactly what I would do. And, and I wanted to get, me to get it. revenge in advance. In advance, yeah. yeah. That's the morphine of still looking different on the outside, but James Marshall and oh, Sasha. Well, he's adapting the Sasha prankster stuff, yeah. Mm. <laughs> he knows. That's the evolution. That's he knows. Like the, the and sometimes now Sasha's quiet. 
That's right. That, this comes back to your very first question, which I was sort of trying to lead into. So when we met, he was depressed and quite quiet, and just he, he was just very good at the you know sexual pressure and intent. But he had this real presence to him. So when I came up to him at the twenty one convention, I was just like, "Hey, man, I really liked your speech. It was really crazy." And, was like, and I just started yapping, and he just kind of went, "Yeah." And he was he was doing his staring trick on me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course throughout the years, uh, I just realized that of course you know even though I'm a comedian and it's fun for me, I can just totally mellow out and come up to girls and just be totally sexual and more just chilled out and whatever. And actually. Uh, through through James' influence and Johnny Soporno uh, who, and other people, you know, as I came more into kind of loving me and accepting who I am and just being okay with myself, um, you know, because part of that comedy was really just me proving, you know, hey, look how funny I am, look how sure, great yeah, yeah. personality I am. Part of that was, you know, trying to yeah. trying to trying to find myself. And after a while, I just, you know, in, in this process of pick up and hanging out with all these mm -hmm. really amazing people, I just came to a point where, you know, I don't have to prove shit to anyone. I, I really think I'm a great person. I love me. People love me. And uh, and I can I can just as easily be hilarious and funny, or I'd be sitting in a corner totally chilled, and I'm still the same cool dude. And it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. And that's a huge, huge transition. And in a way, people, it's sort of funny for me because it's public. Because you can see me on YouTube going from ah! to just being there making videos, chilled and chilled out. Like, hey guys, you gotta love you. You gotta just be, you know. So it's a really big thing, and it's kind of been public. You know, and I think that's cool. It's an interesting yeah. thing because a long time ago, I mean, I I started out in theater and did a lot of that. And one thing that I always realized was theater people were, it was just a really tough template to explore yourself. But stand-up comedy more. So theater, you're like, film actor, one thing. You know, you watch, you, there's like some narcissism there, all that sort of stuff. You're watching yourself on the screen. But in theater, it's constant feedback. But in stand-up comedy, it's instant feedback. Yeah. You know, and That's it's right. just a hard thing to like build. Either way, it's gonna affect you, you know? But what I hear you saying is that the world in seduction, getting out there socializing, you know, being sexual with people, that stabilized that. You know, it, it put it into a realm where it, it morphed into this other thing. And so what would you call like the root of seduction then? Self acceptance. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost like you have to seduce yourself first. It's like you have to figure out, you know, what do you really want, who are you, what are you really mm. comfortable who are you who are you and what are you comfortable yeah. doing? Um, and it really it really took from like me being like seventeen years old and doing stand up comedy develop, you know, getting to a certain point up to when I was like, you know, whatever, late 20s, and then getting in a pickup and then really going much, much deeper in the lessons. And I think yeah. it really just shows you that it doesn't matter where you are, you're always developing. Yeah. Uh, but you just have these points where you just go, oh, I'm a different person now, or this has changed, or this has changed. But I think it can be, um, it can have a dark and a light side, because we've certainly seen oh, plenty yeah, of guys yeah. who got into seduction and are, and are coaches still today, who it's um, really reinforced masks and uh, actually made them lose their soul, essentially. Because yeah. e even if they become effective at kind of hustling drunk girls into bed or um, you know, having some basic level of, yeah. of results, uh, they've, they've totally lost their personality and, and it's, it's just buried under this pickup mess. Yeah. I had a guy come up to me today, well, not today, yesterday, yesterday, last night, uh, in, in tears, like he was trying to tell me something and he was, you know, he was on the verge of tears and there were a couple of tears and he was just saying, hey dude, man, I used to do all this Really weird, uh, routine-based, indirect shit, and 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 I and I would get laid, and I'd feel fucking horrible because I wasn't being me. And then I saw your video of you just running around being a dick and just doing your thing, and he said, and I just, I you know, just completely, you know, he just he was crying, telling me this that he just changed his life and he just realized he could just go and be himself and just not fucking do all that shit that he didn't like. And it's like, um, yeah, it was really powerful, and I've never had a fucking cryer before, so it was kind of cool. Oh, we've seen plenty of tears. You've seen me cry. Uh, yeah, I've seen I you saw cry. You cry once. Sure, sure. I was jealous once because at the first direct dating summit, somebody came up to Alan Roger Curry and, and t said to him that he was their father figure and the guy's uh, father had actually been killed by, you know, because he had an affair and some dude literally, he had an affair with some dude's wife and somebody came and fucking killed the guy's it's gonna happen to me, father. Right? No, seriously. Yeah. And, then he, and then he never had a dad and Alan, and Alan had been this guy's father figure for years and he, he like broke, and he told a story and I was like, holy fuck, this is crazy. And I was, I was like, I never get any crying guys coming up to me. So I finally had one. So I at, some, at some point, you'll probably be sick of it. You know, just like, okay. We have that on Euro. Well. There's, always, there's always a couple on Euro Tour who break down because they realize that they've been living a lie, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's, that's something to be wary of in any kind of personal development pursuit because you see that in like kind of hippie circles or sure. spiritual, spiritual sure. circles where this spiritual narcissism happens where I'm so spiritual um, or, you know, in, in worlds of um, personal development where it's like, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive, or I'm always effective. And, and these kinds of things where people layer on top of themselves the modality and the method 
and then and then lose sight of what the point of the method is, which is always to come back to understanding yourself and developing yourself from a you know a deep core internal place. And then when, if seduction is done well or personal development is done well, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's going to be raw, it's going to be heavy because you're going to have to face your demons before you you know you step into the light. That's yeah, the cool. thing, and that's that's what I think sucks about the the way most people get into this, which is like reading mm -hmm. the game or something like that. There's no depth. There's no deep. It's it's just right, like here's no a bunch ends. of crazy. Yeah. There, 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 yeah. There's just no real depth, and and I think real coaching and real you know it, it really comes down to deal, dealing with deep internal yeah. fucking shit and getting through it and becoming a better person. And when you really again accept yourself and you're like, okay, I've dealt with that. It's cool, and you move on. Then only can you really go out there and have amazing experiences with other people. But if you if you don't accept yourself and you're hiding this shit and you feel guilt and shame, you can only you just can't really progress. So I think that's. Man, I hate to say it, we gotta take a quick break. We will be right back and finishing this discussion. And quite quiet and just, he was just very good at the, you know, sexual pressure and intent, but he had really big time that something like that so crazy if you're yeah. not already yeah, yeah. more understanding of your mortality cool. and so that was a big thing it's so but, you know for us that are becoming normal I guess that are already do, kind just, of being documented we go, yeah, yeah we are and make money at it so why wouldn't i do that so so i'm so same thing getting my book out got a couple of products uh lined up and uh as i came more into kind of loving me and accepting who i am and just being okay with myself um we'll just be careful hot, to take <laughs> if, if i had that on my balls i'd be telling you to press in London and uh, was madly in love with this girl like just completely head over heels and like, like right. this is the girl for me it was, it was crazy and then I meet this guy and we have this great thing and we're just like wow this could be so much fun what we're gonna do and whatever and he's like